stuck. What do you mean you're stuck? I'm stuck down in the big fog. In the what? In the big fog. In the big fog? Yes. What big fog? Um, the big fog next to the elevator. What are you doing down there? How did you get down there? Oh, you left it down here, then you did the Did you log it? Have you not been on the server for that long? Yes. <laughs> what are you doing down there? Are <laughs> you, you nut? You pure nut? Well, now I'm, now I'm a fish. <laughs> You're a deep sea fish. <laughs> uh, all right, I'll come on. I'll come. Oh, oh, this will give me an excuse to get rid of our zombie friend. So hang on. Hello there! I'm stuck! Hello! I'm stuck! Oh, wrong level. Hello! <laughs> <laughs> oh my absolute goodness, Cass. Oh no, we're not. Where, where, where did we? Uh oh. Uh oh. Now we're in trouble. You no! Cass, you trapped me! With a zombie, might I add? Get up, she says. Get up! <laughs> hey, 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 we are back down in the sheep cave, and I am looking forward to today's episode. Whoa, that's a bit too close. We are installing today all the fun things in the sheep cave. That's right, all the redstone contraptions, the cool things, and some surprises. So stick around. Okay, so the first one we're going to be starting with is the Hall of Armour, because I reckon that's pretty cool. And it's going to be a number of armour stations set up where basically if we want to go on a mission, we can quickly walk in, get equipped for whatever shenanigans we're going to get. Oh, sorry, I mean noble cause we're going to get up to and get out there really quickly. Now, if you haven't seen one of these, how they work before, they are super cool. And um, basically, you got all the dispensers lined up with all your gear. As you can see, I've got a completely empty inventory at the moment and then basically you just walk in bang and away you go ready for action and this setup actually has eight dispensers which means you can get set up with armor weapons potions all sorts of things it's a great great system uh originally designed by cub fan uh, from hermitcraft fame so let's show you how we did that all right so while i'm building this one it's important to note today is not about making it look nice it's about making it functional the nice look will come later but this one's actually really simple. First of all, what you want is you want dispensers on two dispensers on either side like this. Boom, boom. You want two dispensers in the back. Boom. Boom. You want a temporary block up here with a dispenser shooting down like this. Boom. And you want one down below. Boom, like that. You then want to grab yourself a pressure plate like this and you want to put that right there like that. That's your basic setup from the front side. The back side, and this could not be simpler. You want to dig out a little trench, boom, boom, boom. You want to fill that in with redstone, boom, boom, boom. Uh, the next thing you want to do is you want to put some half slabs on the top side of the bottom dispensers like this. Your favorite old redstone repeaters go there and there like this. So you put redstone there like this, there and there. You then want to grab your pick and do this. So you can get access to the back of the top dispenser. Put another uh, half slab there and you continue on with the redstone signals up the top. And you are done. You are completely wired up at the front to get those going. So if I use an example here, I'll put this gear back. Now what you want to do basically is you want to load it up with the things that you want uh, to dispense. So one, two, remember it, it does eight things. One, two, three, four. We won't use that. We'll use uh, this one just for argument's sake. We'll put the armor back off and we load up the dispensers with whatever you want. And you can use anything with any eight items. You can, it'll dispense eight and they can be armor and the armor will equip straight to the armor slots. What have I done here? Have I missed one? One, two, three, four, five, six. There. Um, yeah, so the armor will go straight to your armor slots and everything else will go into your inventory. 
So again, just to show that, we will go backwards here. Boom. And we are ready for shenanigans. Ah, uh, no. No, 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 not shenanigans. We are ready for taking Sheepman's noble cause to the realm. All right, one thing, guys, that I will mention, and I made a tiny boo-boo here. You do need to leave, if you're going to put rows of these things, you do need to leave a gap between. Because if you activate at the moment this dispenser here, the way it's wired up, it'll actually fire these ones and the things will be sitting there. So, as I'll demonstrate just quickly at this little piece of redstone. So, that's in the dispenser firing into here. I stand in here and activate it, boom, and it's come out, which we don't want. So, I'm just going to rebuild this one, move it over one block. But yeah, sorry about that, but just keep that one in mind for future reference. That if you build these units, the wiring's the same, but you just want to keep at least one in between each one. All done, guys. So again, remember, today is not about the look. This is about the functionality. So we've managed to get four, uh, four dispensers in here, uh, four stations. I was going to be able to get five, but unfortunately when I realized that I'd forgot to leave a gap between them, we lost the space for one. But that's actually worked out pretty good. Um, and you'll see why that is the case design-wise when we actually go to do like the terraforming and the, the actual build to make this look good. But that's the Hall of Armor done for now in terms of functionality. On to the next, I don't know what to do. What should we do? Let's have a look around. Uh, no, that's for the Don to do that one. That builds, that's the Don's. Oh, vault door. And here we are. This is the Sheet K vault door. Now, this is the input, temporary input at the moment. Nice and open. Nice and closed. Now, this is actually, uh, I won't show the, um, the tutorial for this one, but it was from a user called Misty Cat on YouTube, and I'll link that down below. But essentially, it's actually very simple to make. Uh, what it is, is just a flying machine that goes back and forth uh, with the blocks attached. Uh, very effective, very easily done. And um, yeah, follow his tutorial if you want to make one of these. There's no point in me making it because his tutorial is fantastic. So follow that. What I am going to do though is I'm going to change the input to the same locking mechanism that we used somewhere else. It, that actually requires a key to input. Um, so we'll install that now and then we'll move on to the next project. All done. And now what we're going to do is just show quickly how it goes. So you just throw the key on the ground, put it back, and the bolt opens just like that. Uh, there is a button on the inside, so if you're on the inside, you can just go ammo. That closes the vault, and away you go, and you're safe, and you can get out too, I suppose. And then you open it and out. And of course, if you're on the outside, you drop the key back in. And the vault is now closed. Fantastic work. Another area done, or another contraption done. On to the next one, and I got no idea what we're gonna do next. I'm thinking auto storage, which will help. Yes, we will do auto storage because that'll help me be able to clear up the mess that I've got of a chest monster right now. The design I'm going to use for this auto storage here, for, well, storage for the sheep cave, is the Etho Labs Optobox. If it still works, it's quite an old design now. But I don't need a big massive auto story system because this is only a temporary base for a storyline. Um, so let's crack into it and let's see how we go.
Oh, sweet, it works. So what I'll say quickly here, and if you're following along with Etho's uh, tutorial, which is I'll link down below, when he places the observer, there has been changes since he designed this a few, four or five years ago. So what you actually have to do is you actually have to put the observer the opposite way than in the tutorial. And you have to put a piece of red, uh, red dust, uh, sorry, redstone dust on top. And then what that does is that picks up the change on the comparator. So the comparator picks up the change on the arrow, sends a signal through to the, uh, the redstone dust, which then the observer picks up and then makes the whole system work. But that now works an absolute treat. So you load up all the diff whatever you want in the different colors. You just move that and away you go. Now it is also true uh, what Etho said, don't move too quickly, otherwise you'll break it and you'll have to reload it all. But I love this. This is just excellent. So what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna go through and pick up what colors we, uh, what we wanna put in each of the shulker boxes and clean up the chest monster that we have over there. What to do, what to do. Um, so we've got a fair bit done so far, but I think we might move on to the crafting and furnaces. So we're gonna build a small auto smelter here and a crafting area. Now, that's not too exciting. I think everyone knows how to do an auto smelter. So I'm not gonna record that one. Uh, but I'll set that up and come back after that is all done. I thought I would just show the bare bones of this um, in case people haven't actually seen one of these before. I haven't built one before. And there's something a little different that I've done on this one that I've never done before on an auto smelting system. Now you've got three inputs. Well, you've got two inputs and one output. This one here is your fuel line. So just as an example, we will put in uh, the fuel, which goes into the hopper minecart, as you can see there. You flick the switch and away it go, and it will distribute that coal or the fuel source between all of the smelters. Uh, this is your input, so this includes what you would like to smelt. Cactus up there in the thing and you send that off and you will see all the fuel lines start to go. Now what happens here is as they uh, smelt up, you'll see here it'll crop into here momentarily. Boom, it'll disappear, go into the hopper, where it'll be all and collected over here, and we're creating a lot of green dye. But this system here, when I turn it on, what it will do is it will actually lock all of these hoppers. As you watch here, we watch this one here, it'll sit in here. Boom. Now there's a reason for that, and that's what I'm doing that for. That is actually an XP bank. So every time you smelt something into one of these uh, furnaces, it makes XP and it stores the XP up. And every time a hopper takes it out, the XP, it'll stay there in the furnace until you physically, manually take out an item. So what I can do here by turning this switch on is I can lock the hopper until everything is all smelted up and it leaves it in there and then I can walk along and pick up the XP from that it's been done since the last time I did the XP. Now, it won't have given me much because, well, it hasn't done very much at this point. But if I just, for argument's sake, at the moment, if I just uh, walk along here, we'll see how much XP we actually get. So as you can see on, on the bar there, where I'm up to, the XP coming through so not a great deal not a great deal but XP nonetheless and this is a way that you can create an XP bank really quickly now this is great for sheep man because when he gets up to his shenanigans noble cause he may need to repair his equipment or just get extra levels to enchant things or who knows what he'll need XP for well this system will enable him to smelt up a whole bunch of stuff really quickly and get XP really quickly, really cheaply. Now what you can also do is you can actually hook up, like what I have at our base, you can actually hook up a bamboo farm to this, which will actually auto feed in the 
the fuel line and keep it going continuously. And then the input line you can actually hook up to a cactus farm and away it'll go continuously. Um, I would do that, but at this point, you know, this is only a temporary base just for a bit of fun on the surface, so I'm not doing that. But that is two options that would exist in a system such as this if you were to do it. I know I said that this wasn't going to be about beautification today, but I just thought I would use uh, this little area because it looked very exposed when I was doing it um, as a sort of a trial for what I was going to do for the rest of the cave and the areas. And what I've tried to do is make it look like a cave with stalactites and stalagmites and those sort of things. So you've got, um, we'll just go for a bit of a tour here. Now, so you come off in, into the area, you've got all your crafting stations just here, all your main and most important ones just here. Um, plenty of storage with some barrels, which just adds a bit more to the, the place lying around here. You've got the big furnace, with, which, you know, role play wise, powers the furnace array. So using geothermal energy there to do the smelting and the smoke coming through. And then a, now a new bridge across over to the vault area. Um, I think that came up quite well. It'll be interesting to see how it blends in with the rest of the areas as they come together. But I think that came up quite well, that one there. Uh, from the outside, yes, it's, it's very straight, but that will be fixed as we do all the areas. So basically what I'll do is I'll build the areas around first, and then I'll do something on the ceiling with the, with the basalt and whatnot um, accordingly. But no, let me know in the... Um, Comments below what you think of this sort of thing, what the design. I've got a, a like a vein of crying obsidian that's running through in there behind all the other bits and pieces. Uh, I've got some vines growing just to see how that looks, and then once they've grown, you know, I'll trim them off to the right height, put um, string there so that's where they grow, and away we will go. But oh yeah, I hope you like how that looks. I think that looks really good. I'm very happy with it. I'd uh, be interested to hear what you guys think in the comments below. So just here now working on the Hall of Armour. And I'm doing the, um, the cave scaping, I guess you could call it, the cave scape. Um, I just thought while I'm finishing one of the sides here, to just sort of give a bit of a thought to my thought pattern in case anyone is interested. When you're doing something like this, it's very important that you make it look as random as you possibly can. The last thing you sort of want is um, something that's like this, um, where there's a definite pattern. So one, two, you, know. you don't, you don't want that. You don't find that in nature. But you know what you want to do is you maybe you want to put this one up a little bit, maybe whack that one up. Um, that's all the way down, and then this one's going to be extra tall. Okay. Vary it, make it look... Oh, I ran out of um, blocks there, but you know, even then you could still do something like that maybe. And then you also, you have to layer it. Now this is only the first layer, but you can still, you can see that it's not all in straight lines. It'll look so much better once it's um, done. But you know, you, you want to be able to layer this and give it, give it the texture. Um, you just don't want to have the one layer, so this is just a very, 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 very quick one here. Um, you don't want it all in the same line. Uh, and that's just something like this, maybe, done, um, maybe here. And there you have like a very rough, um, capescape. Then what you can do is you can grab your cobblestone, this is what I'm using. Wherever it may be. And you use the cobblestone walls. We'll make a couple of those. So we're using those shortly on the, the main build. And then you look to see where they might actually fit. Now, you don't want to put them on one where it is uh, attached to a side because you get the walls of the wall. And you do not want that. And you also do not want to put the wrong block in the wrong place. But you also don't want to put a wall next to a wall because then obviously you get something like that. So for the more natural look, what you want really is to find somewhere where it's all by itself. It's not going to interact with any of the other walls. And that'll give you the best effect it possibly can. Now we'll hop up here. I'll probably put one up here. Um, oh, you 
can't do that. It's, um, there we go. Boing, boing. Maybe there. So that's just something very rough. Then you sort of just use it as your eyesight. Like it doesn't look right, it doesn't look perfect. So then you just, yeah, something like that, you know? And then we go, bing. And then what you would do is you'd reflect that obviously at the roof, doing something opposite, something different, very similar to what you've, we've got going on over here actually with the, the Hall of Armor. Um, I'll show you what I've done over here, um, if I haven't already shown you in the tour, over near the vault. You can see here how it's layered and it's textured to give that depth. And you know, nothing is the same. There's no discernible pattern. It's all varied. It's totally random. Some of the walls are two, some of them are high, uh, some of them one, some are down. And very rarely will you see me actually put um, one of the walls directly underneath another. I think I've done it over here somewhere because it works. It, it looks okay. Um, yeah, over here. This one here is directly, but it works okay because it's broken up because it's got that vine in the middle. But that's how what my thought pattern is. Sort of just whack them down, see, make sure there's no patterns for a start and make sure it's varied and depth. Depth is very important when you're doing something like this. But also you need to vary the textures. Um, and that's why I love the basalt, because obviously you've got the basalt, which I haven't used in the, I don't think, oh yes, I have. You've got the polished basalt, which gives you this um, nice, interesting texture to use. But the raw basalt gives so many options. So like, you've seen how we've used it here for this flooring, uh, with the tiled flooring. But you look here how also we've used it for the stalactites and the stalagmites. Oh, I fall into the, the water there. But you know, as you walk through here, you'll see that the basalt actually gives it the different textures, the different feels, all on its own. Now, obviously, we do have other things at play here, but you can see, you know, I come back to the opening. You can, you start off by seeing the sides, which gives you this this nice bluey grey texture. Then, as you move under it, you get the the raw exposed end, which sort of looks like cobblestone, and it, it creates a change in the texture as you're moving through. And also we've interspersed that obviously with the um, the warp block up there, just for a bit of colour and a bit of texture, which ties into the uh, the vines there, and also obviously the shroom lights in there for a bit more light, but also a bit of change in texture and depth. But I hope you've liked that little look at my thought pattern, and that's sort of what goes through my mind as I'm doing these cavescapes. Is it can't be random, it can't be patterned, it must be random. You need to go depth, as you see, I've started doing depth there. Um, and not using any of those, wherever these go, must be definitely out by themselves. Guys, we're gonna have to call it there for a day. This project is absolutely huge, to say the least. Absolutely huge. Here I was thinking one or two episodes and we'd knock this over. Not a chance, not a chance at all. So, as you can see, there's a lot more stuff that's been going on around the place. Uh, lots of new inventions, lots more additions that we haven't yet even touched on in these episodes. And we still got a monster amount of work to do. So we're going to continue building this cave in the next episode or so of Interrealms. We hope you enjoy, but make sure you leave a like and subscribe down below and hit those bell notifications because you're really going to want to see how this cave finishes up. Meanwhile, I just wanted to say a thank you to our fellow Interrealmers and also for other people that are watching our videos. The whole Sheep Man vs Protectors thing is getting a fair bit of attention around the place with the messages and whatnot received. But the Gaming TV and myself and the kids, we're having an absolute, and the Don actually from Minor Thoughts, we're all having a ball doing this storyline. Glad you guys are enjoying it. We will see you in the next one. See you guys. Bye bye.